Okay, I got my hot glue gun all warmed up. Uh, mine's just like a Stanley one, larger size. They have smaller ones. They have high and low on them, these bigger ones. You're going to want to use a low heat if possible, depending on what kind of glue sticks you buy. Um, just a regular melting one, like dual melt that goes high and low would be good. Um, for what we're doing, you could use a smaller mini glue gun as well. These kind of glue guns can get all different types of glue sticks in them and different kind of compositions of glue stick. You just need a really basic one. I'm sure you've used one of these before, but just be careful. The tip's going to get really hot, and you're going to want to keep feeding them in the back here to be able to push more glue out. Make sure you use it on something you don't care about getting glue all over. And... You gotta want to make sure you have the parts fitting really well together before you um, go to glue them. So it can be useful to use a little bit of tape, like blue tape or white tape, like this, to kind of keep things order orderly a little bit, or to hold things together slightly. So mine is. Uh, my pieces can kind of fit inside, but they're almost too exact. They're they're going to be perfect, basically. So I want some of them to pop out. I'm actually going to have them go onto the outside, like a cap, instead of inside. Um, depends on your cutting and all that, but that means I'm going to put the glue on the surface of this here and then put it down, which means... I want to hold this together in a square shape to help me. I'm just going to put a piece of tape right there. And then when I put the glue on there, or I can even put it on here actually on the edge, I can kind of move it and shape it until it's exactly square the way I want it and then push it down like that. If that makes any sense, you'll see. So here's that piece. I'm going to put the glue just a little bit. I don't want to use too much glue, but I also don't want to use too little where it won't stick properly. Um, and I also need to make sure I work fairly quickly because this stuff's going to start drying pretty, pretty quickly. It's pretty hot, so I don't want to get it all over my fingers, but I need to be getting it in there properly. If I get it on my finger, I'm going to rub it off right away and you could wear gloves for this, honestly. Might be a good idea because it will burn pretty good. If you get a burn, um, wash your hand under water right away. It'll help you. But yeah, be careful. You don't want to hurt yourself doing art. So you're gonna want to get it on there really firmly, um, and then you have a you have a nicely glued top on there. You can see it from the angle. I'm not gonna mess with it right now too much. There's little stringy pieces. I'm going to come back and cut them off later. Um, I can see on the inside there that I didn't get it fully. If you look down the side, you can see probably maybe a little bit. It's too dark. That I didn't get it fully glued perfectly. So I'm actually going to come in here and use just the tiniest bit and fill it in right there. Just barely pushing so I can get get a little bit of a tighter bond on this one side. And I could do that on the inside too if I wanted to drop it down inside there, but it doesn't look like it's necessary. I got a decent decent connection. Um, you could think of this like putty sort of, but I want to make sure I got a good solid bond there. But I don't want to get a bunch of extra glue on because I'm have to clean it all off once it dries. So I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna use this little, uh, what do you call it, pallet knife to scrape it real quick, and I can use an extra piece of um, the the mat board as well or a cardboard if I wanted to. Also, so that's looking pretty good. You'll remember that I don't have this whole thing glued together. I have it taped together. So now would be a good time to come in and glue it. 
also I had it taped so I could put the cap on. That was I put the cap on. You're probably asking yourself why didn't you glue this part first and then put the cap, the other end piece that I'm calling the cap on. Well, the reason why is because I wanted that other piece to keep to be the template or the piece that squared up this whole thing. So if it was already connected on this long piece over here to a square, then this edge here will be easier to keep square. Does that make sense? The shape of the square will be easier to keep because the square is holding it in place already. And I didn't want to glue this first into a weird... If I glued this first and I didn't get it perfectly square, I could have like a weird diamond shape or something. And then end up with a problem. But if I had a square already connected to it, it's a lot easier to keep it square. Okay. And I keep talking about square because when you're doing things that are geometric, if they get off and they start looking like wonky and not actually the shape you want them to be, like a cube or a square, it doesn't look good. It looks really unprofessional and kind of funky. There's a purposeful way you could do that, but if it's like, if it's obvious that it's meant to be really accurate and it's not accurate, then that's when it gets like, you're like, oh, that feels, feels bad and also looks like you didn't do a good job. That's poor craftsmanship, right? If you, if you do it in a way that's intentional, like you can tell that the person obviously wanted to be not perfectly square, like at an angle, slightly a diamond, then that's good. But a lot of people, they don't get it right, and then they say, oh, I did that on purpose. Well, that's usually a bunch of hooey because you can tell when someone did something on purpose or not and I've all we've all of your professors been in school before we all know what people say probably because we tried to say it at least once before so I remember in my own younger years of school saying oh I did that on purpose for my art project that was my intention and it's obvious that it was obvious to my professors then and it's clear to me now that I obviously was just saying that to try to just instead of taking ownership of something where I needed to get better at something and learn how to do it better. Okay, that's all I'm trying to say. So you can see how our nicely cut edges that we didn't cut all the way through the box to fold are starting to pay off because we're getting something that's looking pretty, pretty nice um, for this stage. We're gonna have to wait till it cools and hardens up the glue cures a bit more. And then what we can do is come in here and take our X-Acto knife or utility knife, whatever one you're using, working away from you. Remember, you never put your hands in the path of the blade and cut off the extra pieces and clean it off. That's, this is a, a reason why I would prefer to have an X-Acto knife because it's not so heavy um, and then when I go to clean this off it's a lot easier to control whereas the utility knife is really heavy. It has a lot of weight to it and it kind of feels like I could collapse my, my project with the weight of that thing. So you can see how I'm coming here and cleaning it off. There's like been growth since on the edge and now I'm making it as smooth as I can without breaking the uh, the form. Um, hot glue dries pretty quickly so you don't have to wait too long for this. But you don't want to push on it hardcore until you know it's for sure really dried. Um, and you don't want to break it apart again, right? You're not. The goal is not to cut it apart. The goal of what I'm doing is getting rid of like the stuff that seeped over onto the surface on the opposite surface that isn't holding the joint together. It's just kind of like extra gunk basically that got, you know, it's inevitably going to happen because glue guns, you know, you put more on there than you need and that's normal. So then you're basically just coming in and cleaning off the ex excess carefully 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 you don't want to gouge your shape up 
but you just do it carefully like that. Barely, I'm just pushing just enough to get rid of it and not mess the whole thing up. I can, I'm going to also clean this up by, um, this is why you're going to use the putty or drywall mud, whatever one you decide to use to surface this because you can get even cleaner, you'll get an even cleaner form at that point. That's even more finely finished and can you can replicate a lot of different textures with the form with this mud like it's drywall like it has something mechanical and you can get really smooth with sandpaper and stuff too and putty knives you don't have to buy a um, putty knife or even a palette knife use a leftover piece of your mat board to be like a putty knife just to dip it in your putty and then you use it like that mine is dried out but i would show you but yeah you dip it in and then you can apply it um i think most people have puttied things before so it's probably not super necessary for me to show you but nonetheless that gives you an idea of how to think about um, cleaning this up applying putty then getting it smoothed out as much as you can knowing that it'll be kind of like cake frosting and then coming back with different types of tools um, sandpaper to really give the effect you want at the end and then after that thinking about painting um, painting it and coloring it with different mostly you want to use acrylic paint and I'm going to show you an example of a sculpture that I painted that um, I made that you may have seen in the faculty show that was at Merced College at some point or you know maybe not it's been a while since then so don't worry about that I'll just show it to you right now I um, did this piece very similarly in a lot of ways but it's not quite the same it's got more like plaster on the surface but you can see it there that I also um, painted it and then I had distressed it and then added a clear coat over it. This is one of those pieces I was telling you about that's like dealing with architectural model space and thinking about things like that. Um, like this is a form that's meant to be come like really archetypal and make you think about what it is in the place and what it would be used for. It got a little damaged. And I was playing with, it got damaged there, different colors of paint on different sides of it. Because it was based off of a painting. Um, you can see that this is actually a lighter blue. This is a brighter blue. Because it was based off paintings where I was doing artificial light sources. And so this purposely lighter blue to make it look like the light was hitting from here on the object even though right now in this environment the light's coming from over this way it's kind of just messing with it and um, part of the idea i don't know you probably can't see it as well as i would like in that regard but i'll hold it close there's the dark blue you can see that that blue over there is a lot lighter so you want to think about you know the color palette you would use and this one being blue was a not arbitrary it was kind of like the emotional impact of blue for a form. This was called Burned Into My Memory um, and is about my own life and experiences as well. Um, and it's a smaller work than a lot of works I create in this way. Um, the hometown, my hometown is Redding, California and it had a fire not that long ago. And then where I was born is paradise, which completely burned to the ground. So part of this is about that type of stuff. So I built up some of the patina on here with ash as well. But it's about a lot of other things too. And some of it's about, you know, use of buildings and the type of forms people use. I think if I redid this, I would keep, there's more things I would do. And this might be kind of an intermediary piece that I keep working on and build up and maybe make bigger or completely differently. But I'm pretty happy with it. Um, 
so I think this shows you that a humble material can really get some interesting results that are conceptually interesting and have a beautiful sort of surface to them. I clear coated it afterwards to really give it a little bit more shine. But the basic point is that acrylic paint works really well to um, to mess with this type of stuff. You're, it's really acrylic is a really nice medium for this and. These are going to be kind of soft, so you're going to have to be aware of them. Like I have damage here on this piece because it hit something. So this is kind of fragile, um, especially the parts that kind of stick out a little bit more. So you're going to have to be careful with these, um, and the clear coat can help you with that. So that kind of takes us through the main ideas here about building, cleaning it up, and making it, um, and then painting it. You can do spray paint, you can do acrylic. I recommend acrylic. If you want it to look really, you smooth it out a lot, a lot, and really finely sand it. Well, then make sure you wear a dust mask for your protection and do it outside um, in a workspace of some sort. And then you can wait till it dries really well, like uh, fully dries before you do that. Like you, when you first put it on, it'll be pretty wet. So you don't want to, you want to let it dry at least overnight before you paint it. And then you probably want to leave a section of it. Um, that's the bottom of it that's unpainted and maybe just plain mat board. It's up to you. But make sure it's really dry before you paint it. And then once you paint it, if you want it to be really smooth and finely finished and you had it almost perfect, you could spray paint it and just carefully move the spray paint. You want to be back like 12 inches and it would be really, really fine, smooth surface. But I think for a lot of us, acrylic is a really good way to go for this. It's not so toxic and you don't have to worry about getting it everywhere. All right, if you have questions as ever, please ask and I'll help you out with your individual ideas and projects. But it's kind of uh, just want to throw you different ideas out there of how to build with it. This is interesting. These you can still cover with the putty and um, paint as well so all right guys i'm looking forward to seeing what you have come out of this whole process i think you got a lot of potential so keep going i'll talk to you soon